Welcome to Book Cuddle. I'm your host, Karen Reeder, and today we are discussing a rather heavy topic. I have a wonderful guest with us today, AJ Whitney. She is a middle school counselor, and we're going to talk about suicide prevention awareness today because it is that's the month theme it is September is suicide prevention awareness and it's just it is such a heavy topic but I feel like it is one that just needs to be talked about more we're doing a better job than we were back when I was in high school over 20 years ago but I think we can continue to do better because really I feel like shouldn't the goal be zero suicides right like what a right sad thing so it's something that we we just hope it will never happen and so many of us as parents or teachers just kind of push it to the back of our minds I feel like mm-hmm. and it's just the unfathomable but what if AJ we do start seeing signs of it what do we do when we as an individual whether it be from a parent or a teacher or just somebody in the community we start seeing signs of someone that we know we're like, mm, are they are they starting to consider something mm-hmm. about suicide? What do you think first steps are? Well, you know, I think first it's important to understand what those signs are. Um, and so, I mean, the biggest signs are just any kind of sudden change in a person. Okay. Um, a lot of times we might see a change in eating or sleeping habits. Right. So, um a lot of times it's a loss of appetite, but it could also be eating more than usual. Okay. Um, and sleeping can go either way. It can be sleeping way less than usual. It can be sleeping way more than usual. Um, this might be a common one that a lot of people know, but giving away prized possessions to people, um, writing a lot of heartfelt notes to people we care about. Especially if um, that was something, again, a change, right? Something that right. individual yes. did not previously do. Right. And, uh, and, you know, sudden personality changes too. One of the biggest things that often happens is you'll have somebody who has seemed really down and depressed for a long time. And then all of a sudden they seem like they're better. They're happy again. Okay. And people tend to think that that is really good news. Right. Right. Yeah. Reality. Sometimes that can be a sign that they've been down, they've been depressed, they haven't known what to do. And now they've made a decision to mm. try to end their life. They've, and they feel better because, because now they have this resolution worked out. They have a plan going forward. They know what to do right. and the sadness. Right. And so yeah. even if you see a sudden personality change to all of a sudden I'm happy and wonderful, that could still be an unfortunately bad sign. Okay. Um, and so those are really, really important things to look out for. So what I'm thinking, we, because these signs can mean so many things, right? Do you have phrases? Like, how do you even approach somebody to start talking about these things that you're, you're yeah. concerned? You've seen some evidence that something's up. What do you do? Well, you know, a lot of people get really worried. How do I talk about this? Yeah. What should I say? Am I going to give them ideas if I bring right. it up? Right. And I know that a, I know that that's a thing that we get uncomfortable with and we get really scared about. Well, if I ask directly about suicide, maybe they will start to think, oh, that actually sounds like a good idea when they hadn't thought of it before. But in fact, all the research actually shows that talking about suicide directly does not increase the risk of suicide. Okay. Um, So, You know, sometimes we think there might be magic words or magic phrases, um, and maybe we should be really gentle about the way we say it, but it's actually best in this case to be pretty direct. Okay. Um, Caring, of course, a lot of empathy and active listening. So um, actually, when we teach this to our students in um, middle and high school, we teach them to follow the the ACT model. So A-C-T. Okay. Um, The A stands for acknowledge which is just to notice, hey, I've noticed that you've seemed a little different lately. You've seemed down or you seem like you're going through something. So that's really just an empathy piece. Perfect. This stands for care, which is really just a way of letting them know, I care about you. You know, I really, I've noticed that you've been going through something. You seem like things are hard. I care about you a lot. And then to directly ask, have you been thinking about ending your life? Or have you been thinking about suicide? It's always okay to ask directly. Good, good. Um, And then that T stands for tell. Okay. Um, And that idea is, of course, when it's students, we tell them to tell an adult. Yes. When it's adults, we say, tell a mental health professional. 
Okay. So at school, of course, then the teachers call me yes. so that I can help assess and evaluate if the student needs further help. Yes. Um, if you're a parent at home, man, that would be really probably the scariest thing in the world for oh your kid. Just, yes. yes. I've been thinking about ending my life. I, I mean, I, I about get tears in my eyes. Yes, me too. Time. Just as you say that, I, the very thought. Right. It would be so, so hard and so terrifying, but, but that's what would be even worse is if they did and you never, if, yeah. If they didn't, if you didn't talk about it, right. Yes, right. If and, you thought you they, could have brought something up and yes. didn't act on it and then something happened. Right. If they made an attempt yes, or, um, or even worse, if they made an attempt that was successful. Because, yes. Yeah. So the, the very best thing that you can do as a parent, if you ask your child and please do be as direct as possible. Okay. Um, but if you ask your child and they say, yes, I have been thinking about that. The best thing that you can do for them is to go get them evaluated. Excellent. You can call 911 and have an ambulance call come. You can take them to any emergency room and they will evaluate. Okay. Um, you can take them to, um, if you have a mental health facility nearby. Yes. So myself, I live in the Kansas city Metro. Okay. Um, so we have a children's hospital that we can take kids to. Um, we also have several adolescent mental health facilities that kids can be evaluated at. I, and I know here in Kansas city, we have, um, we have an agency called compass health and they actually have an 800 number that you can call. And they will send somebody out to your location nice. and do a full evaluation right there to determine if someone needs to go into the hospital, um, you know, to get further help. Yes. And that's totally free of charge. I'm not sure if those services are available um, in a lot of other places, but right. I know that's something that's available here. So that's always worth looking into to see if that's in your area. Well, and nationwide, there's always suicide hotlines, right? Absolutely. All and there's the suicide text line now. The text line. Um, because somebody yeah, okay. would feel safer texting. Yes. Yeah. And I, I mean, uh, that's especially true for teenagers. Yes. Um, a lot of times they don't want to make a phone call. That feels weird to them. I mean, I'm almost 40. I don't like to make phone calls anymore either. <laughs> right. Um, so, I mean, your teen can text 988 24 okay. 7. There is somebody there to talk with them and get them through. Um, and that person will always stay on the line with them. But ultimately, if you have a child who is considering suicide, it is best to get them in-person help as soon as possible. Now, I think that is so important, as soon as possible, because I think we as parents sometimes think, okay, I don't want to bother somebody. It's 1 a.m. and I'm crying here with my daughter. I'm going to let her get to sleep and we'll, I'll call after business hours in the morning or something. Right. Right. This is a serious topic and we do not want worst case scenarios. You act right now. Right. You act right now. And I mean, you know, there may be situations where you feel like, I think we can wait until tomorrow, tomorrow. If you insist on doing that, you must stay with that child. You should stay awake and alert okay. there. Um, and watching them. Because if I fall asleep and my child wakes up, and, and you don't notice to go into the kitchen to get something how I'm asleep and yeah. I would never forgive myself. Oh my gosh. Yes. Yeah. So if you're, if you're really going to wait, you must stay awake and alert. You must watch your child. Um, and I mean, this is the kind of advice they would give you after you sought a full evaluation, okay. but you know, if you have a child who's been contemplating these things, struggling with these thoughts, um, it's always a good idea to um, lock up knives, um, yes. medications, yes. Uh -huh. um, anything, you know, that you might have to call poison control for. So household chemicals, Yes. Um, even it's so sad to say, and I hate to have to say it, you know, things like rope belts. Oh gosh, so scary. Um, yeah, because you don't want your child to have access to anything that they could use to harm themselves. Um, I have even seen kids, um, take, you know, the plastic safety razors that we use to shave our legs. Yeah. Um, they've been able to pop the razor blades out of those and cut themselves. So it's, <sighs> it's so important to be very vigilant if yes. you know, your child has been struggling with these thoughts Right. and it's okay. exhausting and it's hard work, yes. but it's a hundred percent worth it. Yes. Yeah, so important. It's, it's, there's no question. You just need to do mm -hmm. what needs to be done. You right. Know, the value on your child's life. You can't 
put a value mm-hmm. in that. Now you love them so much, of course. Right. So that's what I'm thinking, you've got kids and you don't see any signs. So mm-hmm. I, this is something that I, my family is open about. We'll talk about these things. I read a story. Actually, one of my kids hates it. I'll be like, you guys, I want to talk to you about something. I read this story and it'll be like, oh my gosh, mom, I don't want a sad story. Like, he'll just be like, if it's a sad story, does somebody die? I don't want to hear about it. Right. He's so sensitive. But I'm like, I I just, I want you guys to be aware of things that happen and things that can happen with friends. So that's my next question is how do you educate? Well, how can parents and teachers talk to kids about helping their peers, right? Mm-hmm. Or talk about, you know, this isn't going on right now, Like, how do you talk about it when everything's good? Right. Um, You know, a lot of schools now do school-wide programming for students um, in sixth grade and up. Mm -hmm. So um, every district that I've worked in has used a program called Signs of Suicide, where once a year they have a a lesson um, where they learn, you know, that ACT model that I talked about, what to look for in a friend and how to help them. Good. Um, And then they actually have a suicide screening. So we screen every single secondary student in the district. Um, every counselor, mental health professional, social worker is in the building that day to help support. Um, and anybody that's flagged as a potential risk, we talk to individually. Um, and we sometimes will refer out to, um, to agencies for fuller evaluations, um, places that don't have those kinds of things, you know, it's a little harder. It's if there's not a formal program in place at your school, one, you can ask for it. You can write to your principal, to your school board, to your superintendent um, to make sure that that is happening, yeah. you know, district wide, that all students are being supported in that way. Um, but if there's not a program in place like that, it can be a really tricky subject for teachers to try to bring up. Yes. Um, and maybe not even entirely appropriate. Now, okay. it would be is- easy to tie in. Yeah. So, you know, if you, um, Maybe we're reading a text, Yes. but I know that there are a lot of parents that would not be comfortable with their children reading a text about that. So a lot of times those things are left out of the curriculum, right? Okay. Um, And that makes sense that it should be, so this should be something that counselors and medical professionals Mm -hmm. or in the home themselves. Right. And so what that really means is that we as parents need to be responsible to have these hard conversations with our kids. Yes. And honestly, if, if you as a parent are not making your kids uncomfortable with the conversations you're having with them, you are missing out on some really important topics. So, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things that we need to talk with our kids about, right? We can't just wait for for them to figure it out on their own or for somebody else to teach them, you know, sexual topics and um, mental health topics. And don't we want to be the ones choosing how and what is said, right? Right. And so Um, we need to take some so do you know of any any tools or um maybe if you don't have them right now we could link them in the description of what a parent could Mm -hmm. use for how to do this if we fill out a loss for how to approach these things yeah well um I know you were going to ask me about books a little later so one of the books that I'm going to talk to you about um is intended for young adults but also um for parents and teachers excellent so that'll be a really good resource um you know, there's all kinds of websites and watch me right now, not be able to think of any off the top of my head. (laughs) No, that's okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up with a, at least a couple and put it in the description by the time. Yes. I will find you those links and send them to you. Perfect. Cause we want, like, like you said, AJ, we want parents and to be comfortable Mm-hmm. making kids uncomfortable. I like that phrase. Right. You should be able to sometimes make your kids. Yeah. Uncomfortable. And I want my kids to be comfortable that if that ever comes up in their brains and hearts, that they're feeling that I want them to be comfortable coming to me. So I want them to know 100%. that this is not taboo for me, that this yes. is not something that I'm going to be like, nope, nope. That right. I want them to know that they can talk to me about anything. And so right. we and need after- to the stage. Yeah, as with any difficult topic with our kids, um, especially as they get older, right. you know, what we really should be trying to do as parents is just kind of work it into normal life. Yes. You know, you see something on the news. That's a great opportunity to talk about it. You see something in a TV show or whatever they're watching on YouTube or a TikTok video. Yes. Um, have a conversation about it. And I know, you know, myself, you know, things will come on TV where teenagers are dating and something Mm -hmm. happens and I'll say, you know what, 
You may already know this, but don't date guys who treat you that way. And my daughter's like, I know mom, (laughs) but it's good to hear it again from mom. You need to say it so often that they roll their eyes every time they hear it. Okay. Because otherwise they haven't heard it often enough, right? If they're rolling their eyes, that means, okay, I get the message. I know it. It's ingrained in me now. Yes. But if they're just uncomfortable and they don't want to talk about it, they try to hide in their room, put their hood up. Right. Right. (laughs) That means you need to be talking about it more. Okay. Okay. That's good. That's good. So how did, how did this come about for you that you at a point said, I want to go be a school counselor. I want to go help teens. How did that happen for you, AJ? Oh boy. How much time do you have? (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Let's sum up. If if we're in an elevator together and you're going to tell me about it before we get to the bottom floor, the lobby. (laughs) Well, you know, um, I, I had some traumatic family things growing up. Um, and I grew up in a rural area where we didn't have school counselors until high school. And then it was basically their job to help us get into college, right? Um, Right. This was before our full school counseling model that we use now. That wasn't a thing back then, which makes me feel a million years old. Um, But, you know, I, in junior high, maybe seventh grade-ish, sixth grade, um, just started really going through some mental health struggles. Um, I was anorexic. I was cutting. um, I... I did have suicidal thoughts. Um, and I even told some adults in my life and I don't think that they knew what to do with that. I'm not sure they ever notified my parents or did anything with that. And I don't hold that against them because I can only imagine if you're not. And that's what we're trying to do now. Right. 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 Yes. Yes. Um, but you know, there were all these days where I, um, we had to say whether we brought a lunch or we're buying a school lunch in the morning. Okay. I always said that I brought a lunch, but I never had a lunch with me. Okay. All those days I walked into the cafeteria with no food and just sat there mm-hmm. and I'm not sure anybody noticed. Okay. And as I got older and, you know, got some help and dealt with my own issues and became a more emotionally healthy person, I really wanted to be the person that was there for those kids because I didn't have anybody that helped me. I want to be the person that can help now. And that's one of the reasons I worked in elementary school for a long time. Okay. But that's one of the reasons that I chose to go into middle school because that was the time when I needed somebody the most. And you're one and of I know that is, else. yes, that is one of the most challenging times in development for kids. And I really want to be there for those kids who don't have anybody else. AJ, that's beautiful. I love that you are out there to be there and make a difference in their lives. So now, AJ, I also found out, and I don't know a lot about it yet, you are becoming an author, right? You've got your first yes. work about to be published coming out. Yep. So let's let's talk just, again, elevator pitch, because <laughs> this is the focus of our interview, but I just, I can't get away without um, having you tell me a little bit about it. For sure. Um, so this will be my debut novel. Um, it's titled Sovereign. It is a young adult dystopian suspense novel. Oh, I love dystopian. So, um, this is a story with dual points of view. Um, and our main character lives in a pioneer village. Um, she is one of a group of orphans who, um, are named by a number rather than a name. And this small farming community has some very unusual religious practices that center around these orphans. Okay. Um, and the really big conflict in this story is um, trying to figure out are there superstitions and beliefs and all the myths? Are they true? Is there something supernatural out there? Right. Um, or is there something not supernatural, but still very sinister at work here? Um, and are the orphans lives in danger? Okay. Wow. Uh, yeah. Oh, so it's intriguing. I'm excited. When does it come out, AJ? Um, we don't have an official release date yet. We're still working through the editing process okay. right now with my publisher, but um the hope is spring of 2024. Oh, wonderful. Um, and the plan is for this to be book one of a trilogy. Wonderful. All right. Well, when it comes, you let me know so I can share with other people know because <laughs> I'm doing all ages on here. So now recommend a children's book for us, for our audience, AJ. What can you for share? sure. Um, I actually, because I work with um, teens and preteens, yes. um, young adult is very much my age range, right? Yes. Um, I went and I found two young adult books that deal with suicide prevention. Hey. 
Um, so I've got a, a nonfiction book is Dead Serious by Jane Mursky Leader. Oh. Um, Jane actually lost a family member to suicide when she was young. Right. Um, and so she has written this book both for young adults as well as for their parents, their teachers, um, and really any adult in their life to help understand all the issues surrounding suicide and depression and mental health issues. Um, she actually recently um, released a new version of the book, completely updated. Oh, perfect. Because there are, because there are so many issues that affect teenagers today. Yes, that are different. Um, th- yeah, so I mean, it, it goes into changing. Um, bullying, social media, LGBTQ issues, all yeah. kinds of issues that are very relevant to kids now. So that is a very helpful read. Um, of course, I know not all teenagers want to sit down and read a nonfiction book. That's true. That's true. <laughs> uh, there is a fiction book, um, and there's there's so many good books about this topic, really. But there's one called "It's Kind of a Funny Story" oh. by Ned Vizzini. Okay. Um, and this follows a teenage boy who, um, I, oh, I'm struggling to remember. He either has been contemplating suicide or had a failed suicide attempt. Okay. Um, and he's in a psychiatric hospital in New York mm-hmm. City. Okay. Um, and this book is really funny and witty and clever. Um, so kids will have a good time reading it. But it also explores not only his experience, but also the experience of the other kids that he meets in this hospital. Mm. Um, And so it explores difficult mental health topics um, from various perspectives. And there should be a perspective in there that everyone can relate to. Right. So it's it's like kind of story format. Are these other individuals sharing it with him or is it as he discovers them? Um, I think it's really it's been a while. Okay, sorry. Um, That's okay. I think it's really, you know, as he meets them and they all kind of share their stories and get to know each other gradually. Um, So it it feels probably more consumable for a teenager because it's in story format, right? And there's some dialogue and stuff going on. And I will plug for audiobooks. Um, I I love just to listen. I, I have a hard time consuming nonfiction if I'm reading it on the page, but I can listen to somebody narrate it for me while I'm doing chores or driving. And so that might be something if you're looking at the first one, the nonfiction dead serious, is that what it was? Dead serious. Yeah. Okay. Um, if that, or another of these nonfiction, that might be a good way to get through it, or maybe some more um, podcasts or others, you know, this can be a great way to consume it. If it's, this is just hard and heavy. And sometimes it's just when we're so emotional, it can be hard to read. And, mm-hmm. um, but just listening sometimes can help. And, then- and I want to just give you a small little plug too, um, <laughs> where there's, there are not just books about this for young adults. There are children's books too. Um, okay. it's never too early to start talking with your kids about difficult subjects. Right. And books are a really good way to do that, especially when they're little. Okay. Um, the biggest danger with young kids is that, um, the permanence of death is not a thing that they're developmentally capable. Right. Of it's not very tangible for them. So like fourth or fifth grade. Right. Um, the problem with that is that so many younger kids still have these thoughts and these feelings, yes. but they do not understand that they're not going to wake up the next morning if they do it. Right. And so in some ways that makes it even scarier because mm-hmm. if they think, well, I can hurt myself today and still go to school tomorrow, they may be more likely to do it because they don't understand how permanent it is. Yeah. Wow. So um, something that I'm going to do is I actually have an online bookshop through bookshop.org. Excellent. Um, And I don't, I feel like I should have thought of this sooner, (laughs) but talking with you tonight prompted me to think um, about putting a suicide awareness and prevention section in that bookshop. So I will put picture books. um, I will put young adult books, books for all ages. Excellent. And they'll be organized so that we can go through and say, I want this or I want this. Right. Perfect. So this will be in the description below. So just look down here, click description, you'll see it. And it will have all the links that you need to be able to just help equip you and start becoming, Mm -hmm. you know, just start with something, just start with something small to become a little more informed, start by talking, you know, again, even if it's something that you're like, Oh, I don't see any of those signs. Perfect. Wonderful. But let's start 
getting a knowledge in our heads and bringing up some of these uncomfortable conversations. Absolutely. Bring it up with your kids, even if they seem totally fine, because that tells them if I'm ever not fine, yes. I can talk to you because you're not going to get weird about it. Yes. Yes. Beautiful. Thank you so much, AJ, for spending your time and talking to us about this. It's wonderful. What you're, you're very welcome. Thank you for having me.